Good morning YouTube. Today we are here at Mission City Indian Motorcycles and today we're going to be test riding the FTR 1200. Now before we hop on this bike, I'm going to go and run over a few of the specs. This bike claims 123 horsepower, 87 foot-pounds of torque. It's got a 4.3 inch touchscreen system, three riding modes, comes standard with cruise, ABS, as well as lean sensitive ABS and traction control. It's got a 33 inch seat height, a 3.4 gallon tank, fully adjustable suspension in the front as well as the rear piggyback shocks and come standard with an Akrapovich exhaust with a little bit of a carbon fiber detailing here. The motor is a 1203cc V-twin or a 73 cubic inch. It is fuel injected, water cooled, and of course is a dual overhead cam. Up front we have a 19 inch wheel with 320 millimeter rotors with a four piston Brembo caliper. And in the rear we have an 18 inch wheel with a single Brembo caliper and rotor setup. We have LED lighting in the rear as well as the front. Comes with the Pro Taper bars, has 43 degrees of lean angle, and weighs in at 518 pounds with a full tank of fuel. All right, guys, well, enough talking about it. Let's go ahead and uh, hop on this bike. All right, guys, so here we go for the test ride in full transparency i uh was not recording last time i took this bike out but that's good news for you guys because i was actually able to find out some more stuff while we were sitting here playing around with it that i can uh, tell you guys about first thing you notice when getting on this bike is that the uh, rear sets are definitely rear sets uh, they have more of a sport touring uh, feel to them as far as like how back they are, but the foot controls themselves are very nice. They're exactly where you want them to be. They are very responsive. Playing around with this uh, this gauge, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up, but you can swipe through different gears or different uh, screens, and to change your modes, it's simple as get to that, press what mode you want. We are going to be riding in sport mode with ABS on. Actually, no, let's go ahead and change that. All right, traction control and ABS is going to be off. Yes, disable. All right, here we go. This bike has tons of power, guys. <laughs> 123 horsepower, 87 foot-pounds of torque, 1,203 cc's, and you feel every one of them. Going back to the riding position, it is, like I said, a little bit more aggressive than any cruiser that I've ever been on. I guess the two Harleys you could compare it to would be like the FXDR or the Fat Bomb. This is definitely more of an aggressive stance. And it lifts the front wheel <laughs> like it's nobody's business, guys. <laughs> I mean, it just hops up, no problem. The flickability of it is not as aggressive as I thought it would be. Uh, it's still extremely nimble, but it does take quite a bit of power to get it to lean over. But then once it leans over, it's, it's over. The low speed turning on this bike is probably one of the best turning bikes I've ever ridden. That's uh, sport bikes, everything combined, not just cruiser, Harley, etc. Low speed, this bike handles amazingly. It would be perfect for an urban environment. The guy was also showing us that you can uh, flip through your screens and your menus with your handlebar controls, which is pretty nice. And this bike also does come with ABS and cruise control and trash control standard. Ah! Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, I kind of feel like a dig for getting out of the way. I'm gonna I'm gonna go because I don't want to lose the group. Damn, this bike is quick. Those dual disc brakes up front definitely get the job done. Both the front and rear brakes are very responsive. 
very well controlled as well like with the fronts i feel like sometimes when you do a dual disc brake up front it almost feels out of control like you're you're just a little bit away from you know screwing something up not with this bike it feels very well mannered i guess is a good way to put it This thing is just fun, guys. So running through the specs real quick, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is the FTR 1200S. This specific model with the red frame and everything is coming in at $16,999, which uh, puts it in the range of like the Fat Bob 107. Uh, I think the low rider is a couple grand more. This bike, guys, is, uh, well, for what it's made for, much, much better. I mean, just, if you just look at the, the, the checklist alone, fully adjustable suspension, front and rear, that's, I mean, that's probably a $3,000 upgrade, if not more, on other bikes. You've got trash control, ABS, which are usually add-ons, and then uh, cruise control, standard, which is almost always an add-on. You get the touchscreen display. I'm fairly certain none of the Harley lineups, as far as like the soft tails go, have any sort of touchscreen setup or any screen really. And then strap all that onto a bike that's putting out over 100 horsepower and only weighs just over 500 pounds. This thing was worth the hype, guys. Now, as of recording this video, the FTRs are just now barely starting to uh, trickle into dealerships, but they've been released for, I wanna say close to a year now. And uh, the hype is is definitely up there as far as hype factor, but let me, let me re-emphasize, it is worth the hype. Okay, so I'm looking at the screen here. You got odometer, RPMs, a fuel gauge, gear indicator, oil temp, as well as your coolant temperature. Oh, that's nice. And then swipe to the other screen. Uh, you get the air temperature, 77 degrees, 74 miles of range, your odometer, as well as a compass, a gear indicator, RPM, and speed. So I like that. I really do like that. As far as the seat goes, it's not the best, but it's far from the worst. Uh, you are kind of in a forward-leaning slant angle, so you do kind of get pushed a little bit forward. Uh, the seat is thin, but the seat is very wide, so you're not... The, the pressure points really aren't there. As far as wind goes, it's extremely minimal. Now, I've, of course, had the opportunity to take it on the highway already on the last ride, but I can tell you now, before we go on the highway, and it's hard to hear me, that even at 75 miles an hour, you're not getting blown around. The wind isn't just whipping your helmet around. There's almost zero buffeting on my helmet. Even without a fairing and a windscreen, the way that this bike puts your body into position, you're kind of leaning into the wind, it's, it's very comfortable, honestly. It kind of uses your body to, to push back and cut through the wind. And like I said before, the uh, low speed cornering on this bike is phenomenal. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. Also, I slipped out here. Okay, so it was dirt. <laughs> I got on it here last time and you can see that uh, all the construction has made it very dirty. I wasn't sure if that was just raw power that kicked the wheel out or if it was dirt and we've confirmed it's dirt. So highway speed, six gear, we're running about 4,000 RPM. This thing red lines at 9,000 RPM. So let me, uh, let me get some space here so I can show you. A six gear pull at 50 miles an hour. Ready? I mean, it gets up and goes, guys. <laughs> and 50 was probably a little too slow for uh, six gear but the power is there. The power is very on demand. So two questions I like to answer on every test ride is who is this bike for and is it a good beginner bike? 
So who is this bike for? I can see this being a, uh, a definitely aimed towards the younger generation uh, just because of the more aggressive riding stance. Uh, I've been on this bike for about 20 minutes total now and I do feel some pain in my wrists. Granted, that is be mostly because I don't have a bike that has this sort of stance. That does go away after time. Uh, I've had sport bikes in the past that had the same issue and once your muscles build up to it and are used to it, it that goes away. But just for the riding style, this is going to be for someone who likes having fun. This is definitely not someone who just wants to go out and, and crush miles. No, this is a this is a canyon carver. This is something you could take out of the twisties, maybe even a track day here and then, and have a blast on. Is it a good beginner's bike? Now, with the introduction of the different modes and the nannies built into this bike, I can honestly see it being a good beginner's bike because you can really dumb down the throttle and kick on the traction control, make it, make it a lot more safe than it is without everything on. And I think that this is a bike that someone could grow into. Now, is there better starter bikes out there? Absolutely. But if someone was dead set on having this as their first bike, I would not discourage them. Now, I know the question a lot of you guys are asking is, am I going to buy this bike? And the short answer is no. But for anyone who loves riding, especially with a aggressive style, I would definitely point them in this direction. Man, that low speed turning, is it blows my mind. It really blows my mind. This bike is so well balanced. But going back to, <laughs> sorry, going back to my point, I will not buy this bike simply because of the fact that I like to work on bikes. I like to customize bikes. And this bike is one of those bikes that's just something great off of the factory floor. I mean, there is very, very, very little that I would even do this bike. I mean, performance wise, I can't think of a single thing. A louder exhaust, I take that back. The exhaust on this, even though it is an Akropovich exhaust, it's, it's very quiet. It is no louder than, uh, than any stock Harley for sure. I'm gonna go park in the shade guys, cause I'm a ginger and I don't wanna be in the sun. The only thing that I would say would stray people away from this bike for being a beginner's bike is it is tall. 33 inch seat height. I'm 6'2", about 240. I fit on this bike, guys. So that uh, that should tell you something. But is it worth the money? Absolutely. Is it a fun bike? Absolutely. Is it worth all the hype? Absolutely. I gave this bike a 10 out of 10. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.